You've worked hard. You've done your duty, saved your pennies, and now it's time to think about retirement. But before you let loose, you may have critical questions. How can I pick the best plan for me? Where do I go for the right information? What are the tools to make my money grow? Strategy, information, solutions, and advice from qualified credential professionals. Joe Anderson and Al Klopine of Pure Financial Advisors have the answers to your retirement plan. This is your money, your wealth. It is that time again. Good morning, everyone. Joe Anderson here, certified financial planner along over there. As always, uh, the big man, Big Al Clopine. Thanks for tuning in. You're watching Your Money and It's Your Wealth. Every Saturday from 11 to 11.30. Again, we got a great show lined up, a lot of things we want to get into. But let me ask you this. Let me start off the show with a question. Who do you think the best investor that we've ever experienced in anyone's lifetime here in the US. I'll give you a second. I bet most of you are either dumbfounded or some of you are saying Warren Buffett. And you're absolutely right. So this show, I wanna talk a little bit about Warren Buffett's philosophy about not only investing, but planning in general. So that's what's on my mind today. Here is a gift for our viewers today. I have a book in my hand. It is called Playing the Winner's Game. Think, act, and invest like Warren Buffett. If you want to think, act, and invest like Warren Buffett, all you have to do is go to pfaradio.com. pfaradio.com. We're giving away a free book to everyone that goes to the website. All you got to do is go down to the right-hand corner. You'll see the book right there on the front page. Click it. Put your name and number in. We will send the book out to you within a couple of days. Give us a couple of days and we'll get this book to you. It, 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 this book is for everyone that wants to learn about financial planning but doesn't like to read books. It's a quick read. There's pictures in it. It's a great, great resource. And that's our gift to you. So with that in mind, I want to bring over Al Clopine, my partner, to talk about what Warren Buffett wants to do, it's controlling the things that you can control. Most people want to control the things that you can't control, but if you can c- control the things that you can, you're going to have a better experience. Well, that's right, Jeff. Absolutely, because we all want to control things that we really can't control, like the stock market, for example. Here's what we can control. We can control our goals or our lifestyle or our spending. We can control the the, um, investments that we're invested in, the risks that we're taking, how much in stocks, how much in bonds. We can control the fees that we're paying on our investments. And finally, we can control our taxes. And taxes are very much overlooked in retirement planning. And I'll tell you, it's it's really probably one of the best things that you can control. And we're going to spend some time on each of those four things today. But we're going to spend the most time on taxes, because that really is something you can control. Well, well, I think here's the story, is that a lot of times people understand how to save money. Right? I put money into a 401k, a Roth IRA, maybe I build a real estate investment portfolio. But the trouble with retirees today is figuring out how to create the retirement income. And if you just focus on these simple things, looking at your goals first, how much money that you want to spend, can you control the fees on your overall investments, the risks on the overall portfolio. And then, of course, if you can control your taxes, you're going to have more discipline. You're not going to jump out of the markets when things go bad. And if things go hairy in the overall game plan, you'll know, all right, I'm controlling these things. We can't control the stock market. I wish we could. We can't control interest rates. We can't control governments. But you can control simple things. And if you keep it simple, you're going to have a better investment experience. Yeah, there's no question. And, and it's, it's really because the retirement climate is changing these days. Because oh, It's completely different. Yeah, because, well, first of all, we're, we're, we're retiring younger. So the average age is now 62. And if you look at Social Security, the Social Security Administration says full retirement age is really 66, and for some of you, 67. But yet, we're retiring at 62. 
And then the second thing is we're living longer. Did you know that a married couple age 65 has a 50% chance of at least one of them making it to age 92? Which means you've got to plan for at least 30 years in retirement. Yeah, in some cases 30 or 40 years. Because let's say if I retire at age 50, 55, which some people are doing, and if I live to age 95 or even age 100, that's a long period of time where I have to figure out a strategy to create the retirement income that I need each and every month to do the things that I want to do. The problem is, is that now the baby boomers today, I think this year, the baby boomers are now turning 50, right? And so if you look, all right, well, the, the, the last end of the baby boomers are turning 50. And we've said this statistic quite a bit, but there's 10,000 of you baby boomers turning 65 every day, right? 10,000 10, turning 65. For the next 15 years or so. Something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah. And a lot of the baby boomers don't necessarily have the big pension plans. So I think the focus always should be, if I'm looking at a retirement plan, is controlling the things that you can't control. So that's what we want to talk about today. Taxes are a huge component of it. So when we get back from the break, I'm going to spend a lot of time now taking a look at distributions from this. And like you said, Al, the, the landscape of retirement has completely changed, and there's a lot more activities are, th that are people doing, too, in retirement. That's right, and, and so one of the things that's changed is we're more active. A, a lot more active, yeah. yeah. When you look at the activities that people are doing in retirement, it's quite, I would, it's, should I say, entertaining? Is it eye-opening? It, it could be. Let's see, I think there's a clip. I think we might. Practice that? Yeah. So, right? We could. So, we're getting in shape here, right? Yes. We're riding on a bus. I got, going to the I got zoo. it down. I, yeah. I, I can do this. Yes, you can, right? It's just movement. Yeah. Movement. You know, I think. <laughs> It's great, though, because my mother just retired, and yes. she's in the silver sneakers. Yes. And I was like, well, what do you do in the silver sneakers, mother? And she's like, well, we kind of sit on chairs and walk around, and we do different activities. And so with that, activities is extremely important. We're kind of poking fun at it a little bit. But if you're not doing that in retirement, you're not going to have the longevity, I think, that you probably want to have you, in retirement. You do need to exercise. So let's start with what you actually can control. So starting with your goals, really, uh, and how much you're spending. And so a couple things you need to know is a little formula, and it's it's, uh, it's you, you start with your desired spending. Like, let's say you want to spend $100,000 in retirement, and you got to look at your fixed income, like Social Security and pensions and the like. That's your fixed income. Take your spending goals minus your fixed income, and that will leave a shortfall. So let's say your, your, your income is $60,000 and you want to spend $100,000, so you're short by $40,000. That needs to come from your investments. And so now how much do you need in investments to be able to cover that? Very simple formula. Multiply that shortfall by about 25. That would be a million dollars. That would be your number on how much that you would need. Yeah, this is a real simple calculation, which I, mo I hope most of our viewers do. First, start with your goals. How much money are you spending on a monthly basis or annual basis? And then look at your fixed income sources. And then you want to figure out, okay, well, if I have 50, 60, 70,000, 30,000 dollars of Social Security pensions, whatever your number is, then whatever that shortfall is, you multiply it by 25. Here's the rationale behind that. There's something that's called a sustainable distribution rate. You don't want to take out any more than 4% of your overall portfolio. Most people say, all right, well, here's my shortfall of $40,000. Then I have to divide that number by 4%. But most people don't want to do that, Al. It's like, okay, is there an easier way to do this? The answer is yes. It's just multiply the number by 25. That's going to give you the figure that you need. And then that would equal, in this scenario, a million bucks. So if I have that million dollars, I take 4% out. That's my $40,000. Then I have the other 60000 coming from other sources. Then that would give me to the full goal of hundred grand. So that would be your nest egg. And right. that's something that you have to protect. Yeah, that's something that's going to create the income long term. And it's good to know that because a lot of people have no idea what they need to save and so that using that little formula you can you can tell how much you really do need to save now I think uh, we've got a clip on uh, on the nest egg actually why don't we roll that yeah it's very important to communicate with your spouse too when you're looking at a nest egg yes 
Oh, God. I guess this was my fault. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe I just didn't explain the nest egg well enough. If you had understood, you know, it's a very sacred thing, the nest egg. And if you had understood the nest egg principle, as we will now call it, in the first of many lectures that you will have to get, because if we are to ever acquire another nest egg, we both have to understand what it means. The egg is a protector like a god, and we sit under the nest egg, and we are protected by it. Without it, no protection. You have to protect the nest egg. You out. do. The, you know, the, the, the clip is about what the wife kind of blew the money. In, in uh, Las Vegas, in, in Las one Vegas. night. They, in they, one night. Yeah. The nest egg is gone. You want to make sure that you protect the nest egg as much as you can. Now, what we do when we get back from the break, don't go anywhere, is that we're going to start talking about a retirement distribution strategy to figure out, okay, now that I have this nest egg, now what I know what that number is, how do I create that income with the least amount of ta tax, the least amount of fees, and the least amount of risk possible. So don't go anywhere. Before uh, we go, we got a, another, what, true-false question? We do. Let's see what the true-false question is today, and then we'll answer when we get back from the break. Welcome back to the show, folks. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. My name's Joe Anderson. I'm a certified financial planner, as always, uh, of course, next to Big Al Clopine. Hey, now one thing here. Here's the gift that we're doing today. We're giving away a free book. All you have to do is go to pfaradio.com, pfaradio.com. Check out the website. Go click on Get Me a Free Book. It's Think, Act, and Invest like Warren Buffett. <clears throat> Excuse me, by our good friend Larry Swedrow. The best part about this book is that Big Al and myself wrote the foreword. So if you want to think, act, and invest like Warren Buffett, all you got to do is go to pfaradio.com. And this is our gift to you uh, for watching the program. Now, before we went to the break, we had a true-false question. And Al, why don't we see if this is true or false? All right. So here's, here it is. I can achieve good asset diversification by investing in many different mutual funds in different fund families. Well, can I get diversification? Well, first um, of all, true or false? Well, I'm just trying to, uh, I'm repeating it. And we have a lot of different things Wait, going on. Uh, this I, is all new. This is all, what, is it's someone all, singing the trumpet to us? Something like that. Well, I, think, it, I think that means false. Uh, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> false, but I, we get this quite a bit. It's looking we at, do. all right, well, here. I have 15 different mutual funds, Joe. I feel like I'm completely diversified, but unfortunately, a lot of the strategies that you're doing there, it's a redundant strategies because most of the assets that you're holding or most of the stock, if they're stock mutual funds, are almost identical. So no, you want to make sure that you have different asset classes. They, they could be in different mutual funds, but in most cases, if I have 15 different mutual funds from 15 different fund families, a lot of the time we see it's always in maybe large company growth stocks. So the answer is false. Now, let's do this. <laughs> let's have some more of that. Should we have some more? Let's have more of that. <laughs> <laughs> let's just play that the whole entire show. It's better than the rest of our stuff, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah, they just. <laughs> I think that's a, the theme song of the show, <laughs> not the true or false. That's exactly. Right. All right. So when we before the break, we talked about controlling the things that you can't control, and we want to get into controlling uh, your risks. And so, real quickly, when you control risks in the portfolio, it's looking at how much money that you have in stocks versus bonds. So, all right. Well, I can control that risk factor. So, do I want to be diversified into individual stocks? Do I want to go into mutual funds, exchange traded funds, passively managed funds? There's many, many alternatives, but you want to make sure that you control the risks by looking at, all right, well, how much diversification that I have. And what I mean by diversification is do I have one in individual stocks or maybe hundreds or thousands of different stocks? And then, it's of course, it's about the asset allocation, how much money you have in small companies versus large value versus growth. 
um, international versus domestic, emerging markets, and so on. So the list goes on and no on. No question. Being diversified and also the rebalancing of your assets when they get out of whack. Also realize that you've got to control your fees, and you can control your fees, really, because if you think about it, many investments, like a mutual fund, for example, have an upfront cost, like... Um, uh, you know, a load fund or no load fund. So you've heard of that, right? A load fund has a cost up front. No load fund, there's no cost up front. All things being equal, go for the, the no load because there's no cost initially. But it doesn't stop there. You've got to look at the internal charges. That You can go to Morningstar, you can go to the prospectus of the fund and find out how much that fund is charging year in, year out. Sometimes they're very high percent and a half, two percent, sometimes they're low, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 percent, so be aware of that. Then you got to look at the turnover. Turnover means how often the fund manager is buying and selling the stocks inside that mutual fund. The higher the turnover, the higher the cost. These are things that you can control. Yeah, I think more importantly where we want to dive into is, is figuring out taxes. Absolutely. Because if you take a look, that's going to be probably one of the bigger expenses. That, that you're going to pay in retirement, there, by far. There is, and I think a lot of people are kind of afraid of taxes, really. I'm definitely, I'm definitely <laughs> <laughs> afraid of taxes. Well, because if you realize where tax rates are potentially going to go, that, of, um, for, for a lot of you, is, it will be your biggest expense. Yeah, I think we even have a cartoon on that somewhere. Yeah. Let's see if it comes up. Oh, here we go. So, well, Big Al, there it is. You're the tax man. <laughs> And you got the Grim Reaper right there. Man, he's so now, even afraid. Now the Grim Reaper is afraid of the tax man. Yes. You the, know? The, so, the Grim Reaper is... That's, so taxes are now worse than death. So there you go. Oh, anyway, I love so, it. Yeah, uh, so let's get to real stuff here. <laughs> let's, let's do it. All right, what I want to do is I want to go over to the whiteboard once again and, and then just do a simple diagram of, of looking at some things when it comes to taxes in your overall retirement. Now, I've done this quite a bit before, and that's all right. Let's do it again. So when I look at taxes, there's three different pools of money that you can invest in, and this is the Sesame Street portion of the program. There's tax-free money, there's taxable money, and there is tax-deferred money. Tax-free money would be, let's talk about a Roth IRA. That means any dollar that goes into a Roth IRA comes out 100% tax-free. That is one of the most popular retirement planning um, ideas that you want to take a look at because most people don't understand the rules of Roths and they don't understand, all right, do I have to be young, old, when does it make sense or not? Most people should at least take a look at a Roth IRA if you qualify. Taxable investments, this would be anything held outside of a retirement account. So this could be mutual funds, stocks, bonds, real estate. Tax deferred assets, most people are familiar with. These are your IRA plans, individual retirement accounts, or I could say 401k, 403b, TSP, 457, and the like. Now, there's rules of thumb when it comes to distribution. Now I'm gonna assume this, that you have some money in each of these different pools, which I know a lot of you do not. Most of your assets are sitting right here, and you have a very little diversification when it comes to your retirement income strategy. So, rules of thumb that you might wanna throw out the window is this, spend these down first. So if you have assets outside of your retirement accounts, cash, mutual funds, stocks, because these are held to a different tax rate. It's called a capital gains rate, which is 15% for most people. However, most people don't know this, that this tax rate could be zero depending on what your tax bracket is. Every dollar coming out of the tax deferred accounts though is taxed at the highest of rates, ordinary income. So here's the strategy that you have to take a look at. Is all right, well how do I pull money? Because I have to pull money out of these accounts, let's say, to create my income. You have to look at the tax bracket. So Ty, if you wanna pull up the tax brackets to determine how much that you should pull from each of these accounts. So let's say this, I wanna maintain a $100,000 lifestyle. Well, in this situation, if I'm married, I wanna pull out 70 some odd thousand dollars and some change to look at, all right, well that will give me to the top of the 15% tax bracket. Everything else should come from these two accounts. So what I'm doing here is I'm potentially living in a higher tax bracket, but I'm only paying 15% of tax. Most people don't have the diversification that we're talking about. If I have money in each of these different pools, I can control the taxes on the distribution, which is key. Because what Al and I have seen for the past many, many years, close to 20 years in my situation, is that most of the assets are sitting here. So when it comes time to create your retirement income, you might have a pension, you might have social security, and then everything comes out of here, it's all taxed at the highest of rates. So if I look at this, 
See if I can do this on the fly here. Of course not. <laughs> well, all right. There you go. So tax rates work. They stair step. And I'm just going to draw a few out. There's a 10% bracket. There's a 15% tax bracket. 25, 28, and it goes up to 33 and 35. So what I want to do is to say, all right, I want to take out a certain amount of dollars to get me to the top of that 15% tax bracket. But no more from that, because what happens there is it's gonna push me up into these higher brackets, what I don't necessarily wanna pay. So if I have a strategy in place, potentially I can stay in this 15% tax bracket, even though I'm living up here in a 25 or 28% world. That is the key to tax diversification. I'm not pushing myself up into these higher brackets. And if tax rates continue to go up, where do you think the money's gonna go? You're going to lose more money to taxation. So tax diversification is a key component to your overall retirement strategy. If I can control my taxes, okay? If I can stay down here, even though I'm living in a lot higher world, I could take less risk in the portfolio. That is a key component when I'm taking retirement income out. All right, we got to take another break. So when we get back, we're going to answer your email questions. So go to info at purefinancial.com for any email question that you have of us. But before we do, we got another true false question. So why don't we pull that up and we'll see you in just a second. Don't go anywhere. program folks shows called your money or wealth my name is joe anderson i'm a certified financial planner with mr alan Klopine. just remember a reminder mind you free book today for anyone that's watching this program so i'm guessing we're giving away four uh go to pfaradio.com pfaradio.com if you're not familiar alan and i've been on the radio for almost 10 years very popular radio show mind you uh, not so much on the television. Uh, so go to pfaradio.com. We're going to give you a free book, Think, Act, and Invest, like Warren Buffett. All you got to do is click, punch, put your name in, and we are good to go. So that's our gift to you for watching today's program. Now, let's go to the true-false question to see um, how good you guys are. Now, why don't you go ahead and read that? And, Joe, it's uh, Roth conversions are not appropriate when you're over 60 years old because you don't have enough time to recoup the taxes paid. You know, that is, let's see, is that true or false? Well, well I... Wow. That sounds like it. false. Yeah, it's false. Absolutely it false. false. That's one of the biggest misconceptions uh, about Roth IRA planning. It, it doesn't matter if you're 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, or 90. You have to take a look at your tax bracket. You have to take a look at your goals, how much income that you want to derive from the overall portfolio. You have to take a look at where your money's sitting. If it's all sitting in retirement accounts, then you have to pull those dollars out at some point. That's called a required minimum distribution. That is going to be taxed at ordinary income. Another misconception, when I look at retirement accounts, let's say you have a um, million dollars in your retirement account, and you might look at your statement and say, man, I feel pretty good, I got a million bucks. Alan and I would tell you, you have nothing close to a million dollars because every dollar that you pull out of there is subject to ordinary income tax, so you have something less we look at the purchasing power of the money. So it's not necessarily what's on your statement, it's what you can spend is the most important thing. It's not what's on the statement, it's not what you earn, it is absolutely what you keep. So when you look at retirement and, um, or, or true false and things like that, it, it, it's absolutely false. A Couple of other things, if you wanna get more in depth ideas, I teach a retirement planning course, okay, all over, all over Southern California, if you would like to get more one-on-one -on -one teaching, we usually have anywhere from 30 to 40 people there. They're all looking for retirement income ideas. I can give you soup to nuts strategy on what you can do to make sure that you can make really good decisions with the money that you saved up. So you can just go to our website at purefinancial.com if you'd like, and you can click on a button there and you can get free registration. 
The registration for most schools is anywhere from $45 to $100, depending on the university or the college. So with that, we will pick up your tuition. That's another gift to you for watching the program. We want to make sure that we empower you, we enlighten you with the best decisions possible. And so education is key. We want to make sure that you're educated so you can make the best decisions. I think it is time. You've got mail. We have mail. Thank you, Ty. Appreciate that. It's nice too. I like the I like the mailbox. All right, Alan. Question number one. I just retired, and I'm considering buying a rental to supplement my income. Do you think this is a good strategy? I'm 66 and just retired. This is from Jerry from Carlsbad. Yeah, what do you think, Al? And Jerry, we, we get this question a lot because a lot of people have made money in real estate and they think, well, maybe when I retire, or maybe I own rentals or maybe I should go buy a rental. And I would tell you this, in most cases, when you have rental property and you're retired, the cash flow or cash on cash, which is your net income, net profits divided into your total equity tends to be pretty low, maybe 2%, maybe 3%. It's not a great cash flow asset for those of you that have condos and single family homes in, in San Diego, Orange County, Los Angeles, and so forth. Uh, if you do own apartments, they have better cash flows, but by and large, rental properties are good in Southern California for appreciation, for gaining net worth, but not very good for retirement cash flow assets. So I would say if you haven't been a landlord and you're retiring and you think you might want to do it, I might think again on that one. Now, if well, you, Al, you've been a, a real estate investor for what, 20 some odd years, correct. or maybe 30 some odd years. In, yeah, it's, in, in it's about, yeah, about 26 years. And I would say, first of all, it's not as easy as you might think. You watch those infomercials and it's, uh, it's more difficult. It's like a business. So people are going to be calling you in the middle of the night and there's a lot to do. There's a lot to consider. And so if you want your retirement, if you want something to do in retirement, great. But a lot of you want to retire to do your passion whatever you want to volunteer, maybe you want to travel more, maybe you want to play more golf, real estate can actually get in the way of that. So I would say if you haven't invested and you're about to in retirement, you might want to think again. Well, yeah, I mean, it, I guess if you have a lot of time, you can start buying properties, but you, you have to buy in probably different areas. Let's, let, let, let's go to the next email question. Wow, we got a lot of emails here today, you folks. Got mail. Thank you. All right, right on cue, boom. Okay, number two. Al, you ready for this one? Yes. I'll be working about two more years. Should I be saving in my regular or Roth 401k? This is from Ed from Mount Helix. Al, take it away. Yeah, this is another great question that we get. And, and I would say it depends completely upon your tax bracket what you've already saved, what your spending is. So you gotta kinda look at a couple things. But right off the bat, let's talk tax bracket. If you're in a low bracket, let's say the 15% tax bracket, marginal bracket for federal, and if you look at the chart here, that's $73,800 for married, uh, finally joined. If you're single, cut that in half. It's about $36,000. If your income is below that, you probably don't want to do a regular 401k because the tax deduction isn't that great. Maybe a Roth 401k is going to be better for you. Now, if you're in higher brackets, 28%, 35%, 39.6, a regular 401k is going to be better. So it depends on how much tax deduction or how much tax benefit you're going to get from that deduction. A lot of things to consider there. A lot of things. I appreciate you guys listening. Go to PFA Radio if you want the free book. That's our gift to you today right there. Think, act, and invest like the big man, Warren Buffett. And uh, next week, um, join us because we're going to be talking about how to invest and a lot of mistakes that you make when investing with your money. Thanks for joining us. show's called Your Money, Your Wealth.